Deanna, you're a busy woman around town, and now you're the president of the Utah Watercolor. In fact, you tell me. Okay, it's called the Utah Watercolor Society, Cache Valley Chapter. I love that there is a society like this, and you've got a room full of people. This is a kickoff, but you'd meet every month throughout the year? We do. We meet, well, we meet um, September through May, so we have the summer off, and we meet the second Tuesday here at the Logan Library in the... I think it's called the Jim Bridger Room. Okay, and so that's 30 at 630. It's 630 every second Tuesday of the month. Do you have to let people know that you're coming or can you just show up? No, we love people just to show up because eventually we would love a huge, we have a pretty big membership already, but we love a huge, a huge, a bigger membership. And so anybody is welcomed anytime. And is it through email that you coordinate these things? So if somebody wants to find out about it, do they need to email or a blog spot? We have a blog spot. You can watch the paper. We all always announce our meetings in the paper in the Herald Journal. But we do have a blog spot. It's our acronym acronym of Utah Watercolor Society. So UWS Cache Valley Chapter C V C blogspot.com. Okay, that's an easy enough to remember if you're in the Utah Watercolor Society. Okay, and let's talk about what's going on behind us right now. Oh, this is this is the funnest part about this whole meeting, I swear it is. It's called the critique. And so our actual meeting starts at 7 o'clock, but if you come at 6.30, we do a critique of any work you're working on. We have a team, we have two people here who are critiquers, and they get the audience going, so anybody can really critique anybody's work. And so if you're working on a piece of art Work and it doesn't have to be watercolor. Um, our artists diversify and they have acrylics, they have oils, they have miscellaneous, whatever other stuff. You can bring it here and it will be critiqued. And so that's kind of fun if you could thick skinned, I'd imagine. But uh, yeah. you're actually just looking for help and maybe suggestions? Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, do you? paint or work with art medium as well? Well, I hate to take too much credit because the people behind me are the real artists. I have a passion for art and art associations and that's exactly why I joined about five years ago because I needed to have that outlet in my life. And the Watercolor Society here in Logan is really probably the best um, association of artists here right now. They've got a good solid group. They have regular regular meetings, like I say, September through May, and they're just a good association of people. Well, and there is so much talent here in our valley, and it's so much fun to look at their work, and they are selling their work, and it's some beautiful stuff, and I love what Bev said. She said um, when she heard about the quilting idea, or had, was reading that poem, creativity or crisis. Sometimes you just need an outlet for something, so whether it's to take your mind off something else or whatever, you've got this passion inside you that you can put on paper or on canvas? That is really true because when you do art, when you get carried away in something that's using the right side of your brain, that's when you you lose track of time and that's when you sit down and it can be five hours later and you go, oh my goodness, I've been sitting here for five hours doing art. So yes, it is a creative outlet. Lovely. The same as reading a book. You can just sink yourself into it and enjoy. Okay, well I know that we, we got to talk with Christy and we saw her watercolor realism. You've got some abstract things. You've got just such a array of different kind of art. Let's talk specifically maybe about some of those things and some of the people involved. Okay, well, you interviewed Linda Burris, and I think her some of her work was acrylic. I know she does oil, and of course she's here because she does watercolor. Um, we've got artists that have started out in, in oil and thought that's where they were going to go with their career in art but have fallen into watercolor. Watercolor is a different medium than acrylic or oil because you use, you use water and the water can float the color and you can put layers upon layers to get a different effect, different, to get different colors. And so it's really unique. It is, and interesting enough, I was saying how soft it was. There is some sharpness to it as well. So you have some talent there. Now about these critiquers behind us, tell, are they artists themselves that are voted in as critiquers? How do you choose them to be your, the critiquer? Well, I chose them because I was the president this year. And you the, can do reason, that. the reason I chose them is because they're both so diverse in how they handle their own artwork. They happen to be neighbors out in Richmond. And so I'm, I'm kind of thinking they drive in together anyway. But Ed is, he's wild and crazy. And uh, it's just really interesting things to look at. You just, you just look at his artwork and you're mesmerized for a while. On the other hand, Debbie Allen 
is very, um, let's see, what is the word she describes herself? She's very educated as far as artwork. In fact, I think she works with children. I think she works for um, the school district and works with children with art. So she has, she comes from a different background with her art. Well, and she, if she was the same gal that started, she was showing some work they were doing with the kids and had some great ideas that I'm going to implement with my own son yeah. that you kind of have that shadow art. You've got to come and find out more about this and enjoy the critiquing at 630 and be here for the meeting at 7. Tell us again the dates and the times. Yes, and let, and let me say one thing about the meetings because that's another reason you should come. The critique is really fun, but we always have a guest artist at the meeting, whether it's one of our members or somebody out in the community or we don't too often go past our community, but we get people who really can teach us things. And some of sometimes it's our own members that teach us things. Tonight it's going to be one of our members who can teach us something. But you can always take that home. I like to use it as a goal that whatever I'm taught at that meeting, I can go home and do it and then bring something back at the next month to get critiqued. That's going to be my goal this year. So it's really fun and then I like to turn around and, and teach my grandchildren what I'm learning as well. So oh, and I'm here, I'm taking something with me even and I'm here for just for this interview and I love the fact that I came. So thank you so much and Welcome. make sure that you check out the Utah Watercolor Society of Cash Valley, Cash Valley Chamber. Yeah and you can just Google that. Just Google um, Cash Valley Watercolor Society, and I think we'll come up. We're really called the Utah Watercolor Society Cash Valley Chapter because we are a chapter, excuse me, of the Salt Lake Chapter. They're the mother chapter, and so we're an, we're an arm off of her. Fantastic. Well, enjoy and express your creativity. Thanks so much. Thank Nancy. you.